Welcome back. Tomorrow at noon, Eastern Washington will gear up for their annual red white game. So it feels like now is a good time to delve into some big storylines heading into the contest for the Eagles. First up, the maturation of Eric Berrier. Berrier stepped in last year after now WSU quarterback Gage Gubrud was injured against Montana State. Berrier did a phenomenal job, job leading the Eagles all the way to the national championship game. If Gage hadn't gotten injured last year, then We'd be in the middle of a quarterback battle this spring. Coach Best described the situation with Gage this past fall as a bit of a blessing in disguise for the team as they don't have to entertain questions about who their quarterback will be. Barry's teammates on both offense and defense alike seem to be impressed with what he's done so far this spring. He's a lot more poised back there at quarterback. Um, he still has the same explosiveness, the same abilities to make plays. Just, you know, uh, really stepping up and being more of a leader this year. He's running, just getting away. He's, he's the hardest person ever to chase because he's just so elusive in every way. But I think Eric's looking good. I mean, his arm, always accuracy. I think he's improving on his accuracy a lot, which is good to see. The second storyline is basically the general maturation for the Eagles. Last year's squad had 27 seniors, which is an absurd amount. Thankfully for the team this year, they have 21 seniors, so they will have a fair amount of experience to still lean on. The process of becoming a leader sounds like it is indeed still a process for the team. Having so many seniors on the or on the uh, the team last year, it's almost as if. You're not rushed to be in a, in a real leadership role. Like this year, I feel like becoming a leader, that's one of my, my biggest goals as well. You know, not only just how am I playing on the field, but how am I getting my, my team, you know, how, how am I getting us more tight knit, a better team off the field as well. What the difference is in numbers, even though they're similar, uh, is the voices within those 21. And so we will continue to fine tune those guys in spring uh, over player run practices in summer and be able to have a little bit louder voices uh, heard from afar out of those 21 bodies. Um, they're stepping into a role they weren't part of last year, much like the 27 seniors that uh, were in this role last year as well. So. And finally, the third storyline of the spring is the actual red white game tomorrow. It's probably the most fun of the spring scrimmages around the region as the teams are decided via a draft by the players. It definitely felt like a competitive atmosphere at practice this week and Coach Best wants that to come out even more on Saturday. Fire, passion, a little smack talking. I mean, just just having fun. I mean, it's a culmination of 15 practices. Red squad, win. <laughs> white squad, you're going down. That's that's our only goal. The only goal I really see is everyone to perform, especially because I mean it's a, it's a, our final test. I think it really just sparks competition between the guys. I mean, you guys, you hear people every, as soon as we're split up in the different teams, you know, we got guys that are rooting for our white team and our red team as well. So I think it's just a, a real competition starter. The red white game will take place at noon on Saturday at Eastern Washington. We'll be there, so be sure to tune in at 5, 6, 10, and 11 on Saturday as we wrap up the final spring game in our region this year. Something to keep in mind for this contest. According to Eastern, about 20 players are sitting out due to injury.